Hey hi, today I'm going to show you how to make pumpkin soup. These are some of the ingredients that we'll be using during the recipe and I'll go through them as we use them so that you understand at what point in the recipe we need to use them. So I use a butternut pumpkin in this recipe but you can use any type of pumpkin you like. I prefer butternut pumpkin just for the flavour, it's a personal choice but if you prefer to use the ordinary pumpkin you can use that as well. So you simply cut the pumpkin, de-seed it and peel the skin off it. Um, it's a bit of a painful procedure but it needs to be done because you don't want seeds or peel in your pumpkin soup. Once you have all your pumpkins peeled, it's simply a matter of slicing and dicing them up into cubes. You don't need to have them at any particular size uh, because I'm actually going to roast these pumpkins. So depending on the strength of your oven, uh, will take the pumpkin soup time to whatever it needs to be. So it's just cutting them up and then cutting them into cubes the pan that I roast them in is called a scan pan and I use a scan pan purely because uh, it gets a lot of heat into the food that you're roasting and it tends to shorten the length of roasting time but any roasting pan will be fine. So once all the pumpkins cut into cubes, uh, we add salt and pepper and that's added to taste. I generally like to add a lot of pepper, but if you're not fond of pepper, then just add as much as you would like. You don't need a lot of salt because the chicken stock that we use in the recipe also has a lot of salt in it. In this recipe, I'm using chopped garlic from a a jar it is uh, pure garlic but if you wanted to use fresh garlic you can as well both of those will taste fine and a very good dollop of vegetable oil you massage it all through making sure that all of the pumpkin and the garlic are mixed through and covered with the oil just breaking up any pieces that haven't chopped up properly while you were cutting I'm going to cover the pan now with alfoil and that's to start the heating process of the pumpkin so it cooks better and evenly. Uh, whilst it's cooking in the oven I'll leave the alfoil on but about 10 minutes before the pumpkin is ready to be taken out the oven I will remove the alfoil. This allows the pumpkin to brown a little bit and release all the nutty flavours that come with roasting pumpkin. So into an oven that's 180 degrees Celsius, this is obviously preheated before I started doing the pumpkin prep and we leave it there in my oven for about 45 minutes but depending on what type of oven you have it would differ in time. While the pumpkin's cooking I start preparing the stock for the soup. 
The first part of that is obviously chopping up the onions. You don't have to be too precise about how you slice these because I am going to use a grater to get a really fine onion. So grate your onions onto the grater. I tend to not grate all the way through uh, just because I'm wary of slicing my hand or fingers. So there is a little bit of wastage. If you would prefer not to grate the onions, you can chop them into a fine chop and put them through the soup. They would work just as well. It's just personal choice. Make sure you remove all the onion from the grater into the pot and then we're going to put the grated onion in there as well. Any liquids that come out of the onion I also include which is another reason I like to grate the onion because it kind of releases the oils from the onion. So that goes into a big stock pot along with a little bit of vegetable oil, just a dash and about 100 grams of butter. I then mix in some self-raising flour, a good sprinkle, I think it would be estimated at about a third of a cup. Onto the heat and we melt the butter and give the onions and the flour time to combine. Basically by doing this at this stage, the flour, you are cooking it out so it's losing its flour powdered taste and blending into what you need. I've added a little bit more vegetable oil just to fasten up the process but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. After it's been on the heat for a little while I'm going to put in the herbs and I'm adding a good sprinkle of basil. And cumin seeds, they're grounded cumin seeds. If you have any other herbs that you really like, you can add them at this stage. Dried chili flakes, if you don't like a little bit of heat, you can leave this out. If you'd like it hotter, you can add more. Just a sprinkle of those. I just let them sizzle a little bit so that they infuse with each other. And now I give a really good splash of Worcestershire sauce. Combine all those into the pan and you'll notice that it starts to stick to the bottom of the pan. Once we put the chicken stock in, that will deglaze the bottom of the pan, so don't worry about that happening at this stage. So we add eight cups of chicken stock. I add half of a four cup carton to start with and that's just so that I can blend what's already in the pan together and deglaze the bottom of the pan, get all the lovely brown pieces from the onion. Once I'm happy that I've got to a point with blending all of those, I then add the rest of the chicken stock. Three bay leaves, they of course are only in there for flavour and will come out later at the end. Do 
This is a purchased chicken stock. You can make your own if you prefer, but the stock that you buy in the stores now is just as good. Once all the stock's in the pot, I then increase the heat and bring it up to a boil so that it can combine everything together. Leave it on the boil for about 10 minutes. Remove your pumpkin from the oven once it's cooked and now we add it to the stock. There's no easy way to do this, so whichever way works for you. At this stage, I'm now going to add 500 ml of milk and a product called Honey Barbecue Sauce. If you haven't got Honey Barbecue Sauce available where you live, you can replace it with 2 tablespoons of honey and 2 tablespoons of brown sauce or barbecue sauce. This just helps bring out the sweetness in the pumpkin and the milk helps to make the soup creamy. Give it a stir, blending all of the products that you've just put in. Keeping it on the heat the whole time. Remove the soup from the heat and now we're going to blend it. I'm using a handheld blender but you can transfer it to a food processor or a mixer if you don't have a handheld blender. I blend for a little bit to start the process and it also allows the bay leaves to come to the surface and they're easy to find. Remove the bay leaves from the soup. And now you can continue blending through. Once you have your soup blended, return it to the heat. 
bring it back up to a warm and you're ready to serve. I serve it with a dollop of sour cream, that's just personal preference. You could serve it with croutons, crusty bread, however you like to eat it. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and the recipe. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to comment below and I will answer them for you. Enjoy your soup and please subscribe and like if you like this video. Thanks.